Good morning and welcome to Daily Hope. And yes, there is hope in Lamentations. We will get through this heavy section of Scripture. If the COVID pandemic has taught us anything, it has brought home to us in the American church that there is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to mourn and a time to rejoice. The Spirit takes us through the valley of the shadow, but I don't like it. Yet I find myself recently in the perpetual state of mourning and tears, and the only words that come other than the deep groaning is, Oh God, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy. How long, O oh God? The passage this morning is brutal with its gruesomeness, how far the righteous have fallen, the scriptures tell us. Proverbs declares, For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. And calamity has certainly come to the nation of Israel. The section I was drawn to begins in verse 17. The Lord has done what he promised. He has fulfilled his word. He has overthrown you without pity. He has let the enemy gloat over you. The Lord had indeed warned the nation, but now on the day of their devastation, the elders sit on the ground in silence. The young women bow their heads to the ground. Children and infants faint, their lives ebb away. And now the writer cries out, what can I say for you, O daughter of Jerusalem? And here it is. Your wound is as deep as the sea. Who can heal you? God continues by telling them, The visions of your prophets were false and worthless. They did not expose your sin to ward off your captivity. Merely a few years had passed since God God's miraculous deliverance recorded in 2 Chronicles 20 and here in Lamentations 2. The people have forgotten God once again, but here in our chapter, the hearts of the people cry out to the Lord. The only proper response to the calamity was to let your tears flow like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief your eyes no rest. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him for the lives of your children who faint from hunger. In their recent history recorded in Second Chronicles 20 verse 22, as they, the people, began to sing and praise God, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. Psalm 25 gives us two insights this morning of how to respond with lament over our times and over our hearts. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Here we see two things. Number one, the prayerful posture of the penitent, which is humility of heart. And number two, the proper and positive prayerful petition. Remember your great love and mercy and not the sins of my youth, O oh God. All of us, you see, suffer from a wound as deep as the sea. The same question applies to us as it did to rebellious Israel. Who can heal us? There is only one who can, Messiah, the suffering servant of Isaiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, for only God can heal us. For by his wound, 
says Isaiah, we are healed. We have all turned away, but the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He who knew no sin, Paul says, became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So this morning, as we bring our prayer of petition for ourselves, for our prodigal children, our friends and neighbors, our nation into this new day, may our earnest prayer be that Abba Father, remember his great love and mercy expressed to the world on the cross of Christ and not the sins of our youth. As Pastor Scotty Smith prayed recently, Jesus, heal our blindness, myopia, astigmatism, and cataracts. We want to see all history and the entire earth as the storyboard for the history of redemption, not the arena of chance, playground of evil, or a scary place just to survive. It's yours, Jesus, all yours. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow at one of the services, or you can watch online or on the app. And now here's a blessing. May the God of peace sanctify you through and through. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now he who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. God bless you, church.